so we decided to do an art project in Fiji on an island called Noao, which is in the Lao Islands, which you can see over here in East Fiji. Um, the Lao Islands have a population of just under 900,000, and our island has a population of just over 10,000. So you can see on the map over here that has three main towns, Liku, Salia, and Narasivo. And our school will be located in the middle of Salia and Narasivo because it's the highest density of population. Um, so Fiji has a tropical climate and it also has a dry and wet season like most tropical islands. And um, the main temperatures are usually between 20 and 30 all year round. They don't usually change. And it has an average of 50 hours of sunlight per week, which is about 6.5 per day. And so Fiji is susceptible to cyclones, tsunamis and earthquakes. And the OCHA has devised four sections that uh, categorize levels of severity. In the eastern division is the Lao Islands, they're the green ones. And they have a low severity, which is good, which means they're not going to be as susceptible as the rest of Fiji to earthquakes and also cyclones. Most of the cyclones and earthquakes happen in the north and the west of this country. Um, and they're usually lower than magnitude 7. So Fiji's main environmental problem is rubbish, usually from the aftermath of cyclones and flooding, which pushes them around the islands and into the waterways, which pollutes the waterways and the sources. Um, and the government has a kind of disposable control plan, which is in place to try and um, get the rubbish away from the main uh, towns and villages as fast as possible when they're cleaning up the debris from the cyclones. Um, the architecture in Fiji, the traditional architecture, is generally categorized by a rectangular floor plan. This is a nabure, which is the traditional house in Fiji. It has one open space, a high roof, and it has materials, local materials like banana leaves, sugarcane leaves, uh, coconut fiber, and sometimes timber framing, timber framing from local trees. Uh, there are no windows in the building as well, but the lack of windows and the high roofs usually allow natural ventilation and also control temperature. And some of those characteristics we've implemented in our plan for our school. Education in Fiji is not compulsory, but free for the eight first years. Schools from B school to secondary school are mostly managed by either the government, religion or provinces. The school years run from January to November over three terms. The accessibility for children from rural areas is still a problem there. Fijian people are known to be friendly and hospitable. Many of their cultural practices and ceremonies demonstrate their sense of community. On the slide you can see a visualization from the exterior view. The focus is on the entrance area, um, which is in the south of the building. The open foyer is a sacred place and it connects the inside to the outside. The walls are cladded in bamboo mats and the room is made from concrete and tilt. Here you can see the interior of one of our classrooms. It's just a first impression. The structure of the building is visible from the inside. We want to use um, this kind of windows because of the high wind speed you have in the Fiji Islands and they are also common on Fiji. At one of our three classrooms is space for 25 to 30 um, children. So the whole school is calculated from maximum 90 children. And on this side plan, we want to show you a general overview about our school. Um, one water tank and the toilets are located outside of the building. Agriculture, as you can see here, and rugby is an important part of the Fijian culture. So that's the reason why we planned um, also a small rugby playground and some place for farming to complete in our school. Uh, well, uh, here you can see the disposition uh, diagram and you can see that our school is divided in several functions uh, parts. So first is the entrance area which is connected with a uh, big com community room uh, where can uh, children play, uh, do homeworks and meet together. Then the other part is with classrooms uh, which is for teaching and uh, a big part, uh, part is this uh, uh, this part for teachers, uh, where the, they have uh, bedrooms and workplaces, and also connected with the kitchen. 
Um, and here you can see the way how we get to, to the final floor plan. Uh, so uh, here are four floor plans, so you can compare um, some previous positions of uh, different rooms. Uh, we were trying uh, many different positions of uh, tears and uh, this uh, area for teachers. Um, for our school we chose a timber truss structure because it's lightweight, um, quickly to build and um, because of its diagonals resistant against earthquakes. Um, um, while traditional houses use ties to tie the timbers, we use woodworking joints because um, they can transfer more forces, especially during earthquakes. We use a Grid, um, a modular grid structure with squares of 3 by 3 meters. Um, so we have um, in, to have um, timbers of um, repeating lengths and um, repeating building steps to make it easier uh, to build and more effective and for, um, to make it easy to repeat for the local people. Um, we chose a curling roof with um, a tin uh, roofing, as Jana already said, because it's lighter and more durable than the traditional thatched roof. Um, the Perlin roof, you can see here in the details, and we, and we chose it because um, it transfers low horizontal forces to our outer walls, so they, they don't have to be as sturdy. You can see a detail of our foundation here. We use strip foundations, so we have only foundation where we need it, which is under the walls and it consists of cement and stones. About uh, the water system, we will collect uh, rainwater uh, from the uh, school roof and uh, to get water to the building there will be installed a water pump and of course a water, a water filtration system to get clean and usable water. Uh, the water will be uh, uh, contained in, in these ecological containers. It's made out of plastic <coughs> bottles. We choose uh, this type because of the pollution problem in Fiji and of course of its price. The toilets, uh, the toilets will be outside and it's, uh, the foundation of the toilets will be made out of uh, bricks and uh, cement and the main frame will be made out of timber and it's a dry type toilet uh, so the waste you can use as a compost. Yeah, let's talk about the power supply of our school. Uh, first of all, there is a big problem in Fiji Islands about electrification. Only 80% of the population have an access to electricity. And in fact, uh, the two main islands represent the major part of these 80%. So the smaller islands don't have any access to the power grid. Uh, for that the main solutions are diesel generators and also solar panels. Uh, a brief estimation of the daily consumption of our school is about 3 kilowatt hour per day. And the PG Department of Energy has currently a solar program and can provide some solar home system. Uh, in fact, the villagers have to pay every month something which is not really important and the government they care about uh, installation and maintenance, maintenance of all the systems. That's all. Thank you for your attention.